Thank you for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Megan Johnson, who exhibited recent artworks from her series, Numinous Pathways, at North Dakota State University's Memorial Union Gallery for the 2016 Baccalaureate Exhibition. Megan's work examines imagery from Red River running paths through stone lithography and oil paintings. Her work is inspired by the heightened sense of awareness and clarity one gets while running. Her style can range from appearing to be free and wistful to precise and clear, not really unlike the experience she bases her work on. I'm Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. So Megan, thank you so very much for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. I'm curious if you could talk about how your paintings and your prints um, show how you see and experience the world. Um, for my paintings, I wanted to express more um, the overall landscape that I was experiencing and then use the really vibrant colors to show um, just how much running affects what you're seeing when you're out there. The, world gets more urgent and more vibrant, I think. And then the prints, I kind of related to the plants that I was seeing repetitively, because I run along the Red River quite a bit. And um, I started noticing that I was taking notice, I guess, of um, the same plants repetitively. So I had some prints that were more, like based off my memory, that were really full with a wide range of plants. And then I narrowed it in some prints that were um, more of a, almost like an academic study of the plants and shapes I was observing. Okay. And uh, your paintings and your painting style sort of subsist on, on movement, it almost seems. Um, there's a lot of movement in the rocks, like the organic rocks. Um, they seem to have like a lot of twisting color in it. And then you have the skies, which sort of uh, um, turn and roll. Can you talk a little bit about that, that movement within the work? Um, I guess one running things kind of come into focus for me and others kind of blur out. So I think when I'm painting, it's almost a subconscious thing of um, expressing that movement in things. The rocks I don't always remember or like those details, like I kind of talked about how plants I really seem to like focus in on, but the rocks kind of blur out for me. So I think um, when I'm painting them, I put more movement into them just to express that fading away. So why do some things come out at you and other things sort of disappear in the foreground for you? Um, I think it's just something of interest maybe for me. It's the plants. Not that um, other areas aren't. It's just what I notice more. You're going to get our rock viewers uh, very uh, <laughs> angry at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just because the colors kind of become more vibrant for me, I think... Um, when you're painting those areas, your mind kind of goes to that and then um, different shapes become more organic within those spaces. Okay. Your body of work blends together uh, printmaking uh, with uh, painting, um, but uh, um, they're not like on the same piece. You have them separated and then you have them beside each other so they sort of inform each other, but do they always have to be shown together? Um, I don't think so. I think um, they can stand apart, but as a whole for me, I really enjoyed being able to display both of them just because it kind of felt like a full circle thing for me. The paintings were this broad range with the um, prints then being more focused in on the plants t kind of to show, like I said, what I focus in on more and then um, show the delicacy of what makes up a landscape. I think the prints really showed the um, small details that go into making the full range paintings. If you didn't know the conceptual backdrop of your body of work, you could view these works as just sort of simply landscapes. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious um, why these works aren't just simply landscapes. Um. Well, I guess just knowing for myself, I know that I was running in them, and I think they aren't done in traditional 
landscape colors. So I think that brings a little bit different um, aspect to them versus traditional landscape painting or printmaking. Well, you do have painting, you do have printmaking, but um, does photography play a role at all in your creative process? Um, definitely. I, um, when I'm experiencing those spaces, a lot of times I will have my phone along with me. and. Uh, so my images aren't always high quality, but a lot of times I'll take a reference image, or if it's just not high quality enough, I'll go back to that space and use an actual camera and work off an image. But um, when I'm looking at the reference image, it, it, there becomes a point where I stop looking at it and just go off of my memory of it. But it really helps um, build up this shapes within that space to have a reference image to go off of. Okay. Um, yeah, I imagine with the movement that there's like a lot of like, uh, intuition and in the way that you're painting mm -hmm. um, but uh, and I can understand how the photography can document and hold on to something but it sort of loses its urgency if it's like a still image right and I think um, that is another reason why I don't um, use the reference image the whole time to express that movement more okay and uh, your works in the exhibition um, all are painted it seems like in the same season mm -hmm. so I was curious if um, if you sort of got tired or bored with the color scheme or how did you sort of keep that interesting or was that even an issue for you um, I didn't really notice it as an issue for me I think the fact that it was in the winter a lot of these images um, really kind of helped me almost get through the North Dakota winter if that makes sense because it I had to stay inspired I had to keep looking for things that I found beautiful and did that kind of help me get through the winter in a weird way. <laughs> okay. Um, so at the very end of our discussion, we'd like to talk a little bit about your sort of personal creative process. Mm -hmm. So um, what type of, uh, what time of day do you feel most creative? Um, I'm a morning person actually. I really like to wake up right away and like delve into a project and then I have, feel like I have more time to, I don't really like to be rushed, I guess. So okay. mornings definitely. And do you listen to music or anything like that while you're creating or running or? Um, running, not as much, I guess. Sometimes I will, but um, painting, I definitely listen to quite a bit of music. And what and, do you listen to? Um, <laughs> I listen to a lot of Dave Matthews Band. Actually, I have a painting in the show that I referenced a title of that. Um, but it's not necessarily always important what it is, but I do like to have that noise in the background. Okay. And is there anything that you're reading right now? Um, actually, for paint, um, the painting class that I'm in, we're reading a book on um, women in art, modern women in art, and I have really enjoyed like seeing um, how different women are working in the arts right now, and I think that's something really interesting to see. What do you think that the most uh, challenging thing about working in your medium is? Um, that's a really good question. I think um, being original, probably. Um, I think that's something that's getting hard, more and more difficult just because of art history in general. Um, so many different things have been covered already, so coming up with your own unique style, I think, is definitely difficult with printmaking or painting. Okay. And uh, if you had to work in a different medium than the ones that you're working in, what would you want um, to start exploring? I think ceramics is something I really am interested in, but I'm def definitely not like the strongest at it. Taking like intro classes in that, I never really got the hang of the wheel, but I really liked the feeling and movement of the clay. Hmm. And then I guess the last question would be, uh, what's next for you? I do not know. I'm still waiting um, to find that exactly, but I know that I want art to continue to be a big part of my life. Okay. Well, thank you so very much, Megan, for uh, joining us today. And I'd like to thank you all for your time and your interest in the professional practice and the creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So for everyone here at North Dakota State, keep creative.